Hello everyone. Welcome full moon in Aquarius for August 3rd, 2020. I just did the astrology video on the other channel and we're going to tap into this astrology meaning for um, this meditation because it's really important for your practice, okay? And for the energy you want to tap into. So before we get started, let's start by just doing one long OM, O-N-G. You want the thumb and pointer fingers touching, resting on the knee, sitting up nice and straight, spine, shoulders down, tuck the chin so the back of the neck is straight. And we want to clear the space. We can do that with our mind. You can do that by saging, then uh, lighting a sweet incense. So you can always pause this video and do that. We can clear the space with our mind. Let's use a blue light. Turquoise is associated with Aquarius, but a blue light is used for many different um, traditions and practice. So just seeing a blue light filling the room, the space, six feet below, six feet above, six feet in all direction. Just blessing and cleansing the space, removing all negativity. Three breaths to start our own. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, to begin it. Um. intention to be open to receive the information you need and you want. Exhale. All right. So before you start your practice, you should have at least uh, 15 minutes to a half an hour Priya if you'd like a workout to get the physical energy of the body moving. Okay, so you can always pause this video, and it's really to your betterment to do this. Um, you can play a music, you know, that is upbeat because of the copyright. I'm not playing any music in the videos, but in classes and workshops, I would. So you want to play um, some form of um, drumming, mantra type music that's upbeat and get the body moving. So I'll be referring to things that I've written down that is really important for this full moon and your meditation. We have the full moon in Aquarius and the full moon is all about fulfillment. Something in your life should have manifested or there should be a big understanding uh, for you, but something is revealed, okay? And this is something that is good, all right? So this fulfillment, this understanding is something that you might have been physically working for, or it might be some kind of big answer that will happen three days leading up to the full moon or on the full moon. Right now, today, the second, we're in waxing moon, so it's a good night a good practice to, when I upload this video, you'll see it. Um, it will be a good video to do uplifting, uh, positive affirmations, and so on, okay? So that will be a good practice to do. But on, on the full moon, it's another time to do this big type of practice of bringing prosperity into your life, um, of really filling yourself with gratitude, because having some form of understanding, gratitude, and 
uh, a moment of, of silence to really reflect will help you um, receive the calm and the clarity that you're going to need for your meditation practice because you want the best result for your meditation practice. And another thing that is important for your meditation practice is understanding what planetary aspects happening for, and that's what the teacher is there for, that's what I'm here for, but understanding which one to tap into, okay? Because I've cho chosen this mudra and this meditation, and you'll know your focus, what you should be thinking about for at least a 45-minute meditation. But if you are doing, say, a half an hour workout, okay, something of a kriya, a half an hour kriya, do it for a half an hour to get the physical body moving, right? Then you're over that three minutes to make the body feel energized to do the spiritual work. Now, the 15 minutes left to add it up to 45 minutes because the moon is at 11 degrees, 45 minutes. This is going to be something that is very powerful because your body will physically be ready for this workout. So that's why it's important to um, have that, that energy, that workout. So like I was saying, to tap into the physical energy of our body so that we have that half an hour um, of moving the body and then that 15 minutes of the meditation, at least the 15 minutes. So it's all going to equal out when you practice this um, at home to 45 minutes practice. If you do more than that, then that's fine. But you don't want to be under the, the minutes. And the high peak of the full moon is going to be at 8.58 p.m. Okay, that is Pacific Standard Time, and then it will be 11.58 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, okay? So that's the high peak, and you want to, if you, if the time is available for you, you can start the meditation um, that time at night, or do some form of practice that time of night to really get it going. And I, I would say to... You can even start your half an hour Kriya before that time and then add it up to then, okay, it's, you know, 8.58 p.m. I'll start the mudra, right? You'll start the mudra practice. So now we want to understand, okay, what is my goal? What's my end game? Why am I doing this? this meditation, this mudra. We want to really be in balance with our Saturn energy, our, our self-discipline to meet our goal for the full moon. Because we want to put so much energy into ourselves that we have the self-discipline and we have the patience that we need to see ourselves through our goal, right? We might not be perfect in everything, but we're good at something. Every one of us is good at something. We're not perfect at everything, but we're good at something. And we should make the best of what we have, right? So leading up to this full moon, right? I've noticed frustration. I've noticed um hard work trying to balance or getting used to things. So we can all see in our lives, okay, what am I going through that the Saturn energy would be useful to me? Where the um the my 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 willpower, my my logic is going to benefit me, right? So we're tapping into that logic, that that willpower, that um fighter energy, right? That Mars energy, that Venus energy. They're both Venus, the feminine, Mars, the, the masculine, that fire energy. And at this time, we're seeing a lot of physical fire because that's the alignment of Saturn um, in opposition to Mercury. And also, that's the, the we need to tap into our, our inner wisdom, our old, wise wisdom, right? However you want to say that, 
and then communicate from that space because the tension is so strong. It's going to call for a higher um, behavior, a higher way of handling things. It's kind of like I was saying to a friend yesterday, that Spider-Man saying with great power comes great responsibility. And that's true. They put these things in folklore, in fairy tales, in comics, in, in, in uh, these stories, because it's all a life lesson that we have to learn. We, we want to have this and have that, but I've noticed in the last few days, respect, manners. These things were exhibited. It's like I went to the store to purchase a fan because I need it. And the retired people at the store were just wonderful. The best help you can get in conversation. Of course, I was, you know, res respectful back, you know, of course. But the 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 conversation and the and the um, the, the the presence the the presence and the awareness of our communication was there. You know, it's just the little things. If if uh, the person that was helping me, he walked by someone. And he said, excuse me, because she was looking at items. And I'm like, excuse me, like, you know, I do that too. But it's really understanding the discipline. You can want, want, want all you want, right? But you also have to have discipline. You have to have manners and respect. And if it's something that wasn't a practice in the past, we're in the present so we can actually do that and we can actually recognize it. Whatever we're going through, we have the power to, to notice it, recognize it, or not recognize it and ignore it because we want to live in a fairy tale. But if we want to experience a real, a reality tale, then we can face hardship, but we can face the benefits, the fruits of our labor, if you will, right? So we're tapping into the Shuni Mantra, okay? Thumb and pointer finger together, so it looks like that, okay? And you're just resting it here. The middle finger is Saturn and the thumb uh, Saturn, you know, um, discipline, order. And then the thumb is that will, that will, like your willpower, your logic. Um, it, it, it's your Mars, but you're using your Mars, your fighter, your Mars or your Venus to really empower yourself with structure right so in the midst of any chaos there has to be a calm at the center and you be the calm at the center but you can still be um fighting for something or working hard towards something it's the calmest person that wins the fight right so we want to think about that okay that's going to be the mantra so you're thinking about where you want to be, what you want, what's your goal. You have to know this. This is your personal practice, okay? So that's our mantra that we will be doing. Now, we also want to think about what happens when I get what I want. Don't be overwhelmed, okay? Because we're going from the full moon to the waning moon. So the waning moon is really clearing out the things you don't need right? Because we're in waxing moon right now, which is bringing to us what we want. We can still work towards what we want in all the cycles, but if we use it for its purpose, we get more done and we can tailor it to what it is that we need to get done for the best results. So going through after the full moon and the waning moon, it's really opening up your own pathway of moving forward to what you want. So asking yourself, what was my purpose for my meditation? What was I focusing on, right? This is your incorporating within yourself, instilling within yourself, saying, I do have self-discipline to see this thing through. And what's, my, what's the principle of this? And you have to know what that is within you and really see that through and make sure that these two weeks leading up to the new moon, which will be, the new moon in Leo, I believe, okay, on the 18th of August, right? See what, how you can get out of your own way as you're accomplishing um, that intention that you're setting right now for the full moon on the 3rd of August, okay? So this is what I want to share with you guys. 
when you're going through this meditation, think about the ether. The ether is really this invisible energy, right? Like space, you think of the cosmic, right? The ether is that invisible energy that holds everything together. We don't know how big this universe is, but it's pretty dark, okay? And even though all this chaos is happening, right, meteors, all of this, it still has an order and a flow, and it's still going. So you can think of that within your own mind, right? What are you thinking of in your own mind? Why are you thinking that way, and does it benefit you? Right? So these are the things that's going on at this at this full moon that I notice, right? How is it benefiting you? What is your reality? We're talking Saturn here. What is your reality? What are your restrictions? What are rules that you're dealing with leading up to this full moon? What are limitations you place on yourself or that others are trying to impose? What does adulthood mean? Because there are things that are ne are necessary if you're in that role, right? And it doesn't have to be stressful, but it can be, and then you have to release that, right? This is discipline. Discipline, some people take it as a negative, like it's controlling, but if you're not doing what you need to do, then certain things may not flow that way, and we might turn a blind eye to it, put on blindfolds and, and just blame someone else for it. Or we take action and say, okay, if I'm organized like this, leading up to the next word, organized. If I'm organized, if I'm disciplined, then I can see a flow to things. It's not like the river wants to go everywhere. That's not good. The, 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 the river has its flow. That's its own, its own um, organized way of flowing, right? So we have that. So Saturn can represent an elder person, maybe you, you're you getting advice from someone that is older than you and that gave you some knowledge. And if you were willing to listen, then you receive that message. If you, if you are the older person, you may have received knowledge as well. These are experiences we can experience during this time. We, we can be the wiser person and be above what that situation was, right? We can we, we can just act better or be better for that situation, even though it's not easy. We may have to be the authority for ourselves or in a sense for someone else in the best way possible. We are tapping into our own personal willpower to make things happen for us, okay? So again, now, we want to look at Saturn, right? That's our power. Then we're taking that power to be more in charge of ourselves. When we look at the Mercury, we're, we're thinking, okay, how can I communicate better with someone else? And how can I communicate better with myself, right? So we have to really be honest with ourselves. And that will make our meditation even more powerful, okay? Now... Whenever I hear of Aquarius, I think about the Aquarian age, right? And then everyone uses it so much, but they don't explain it, they don't talk about it, or anything like that. So when we're doing this moon jar, we're connecting to the ethers, the, the um, invisible energy, this invisible energy that holds everything together, right? We want to connect to that. We are not necessarily, this is going deep. But you have to think about it, that when you close your eyes, you're in darkness, right? And that when you sleep, you need that. That's that rest because everything, you can visualize it and make your own light in your mind, right? So I'm just going to go that deep, okay? No, no further. So when we think of the Aquarian age, we're really tapping into our humanity. I'm going to do the short version because I've written a lot. But we're tapping into our humanity and it's not... It's so deep, but I, I, we're tapping into our humanity and we're really leaving, say, like a legacy. Because when you're with this thought, this spiritual thought practice of the Aquarian age and, and, and based on astrology and how the, the planets are moving and the alignments and all of the high moons, which is full moons and new moons and all the eclipses and how it affects 
people's behavior here, and there are people that you wouldn't even think that really uses the practice because it's all math. It's all a, another form of science. And it's, it's recorded that this happened when this planet, this was in alignment and on so forth. And how can you use this energy? Because everything is energy to better succeed in life, to use it in your life, right? But when they're translating the Aquarian age and you're really defining the, the, the words, right? When they're talking about birthright or the heritage, right? Right, so it's 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 the Aquarian age as the humanity, right? That will take control of the world. It's really our personality and our waking up, our enlightenment to hey, some this practice that we're doing it worked for a time, but it's not working anymore. Or it might not be a good practice that was practiced, but it happened. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Laying right behind me. So it, it it it's a practice that happened. It wasn't. Yeah, you have enough room. It was a practice that happened, but it wasn't good. Or it was good for a time, but it's outdated. And as humans, we will we will keep practicing things that we feel, okay, this is working now. Oh, we're used to it. We've always done it this way, so we'll just keep doing it. And then there are others that will be ahead of their time because they receive that message, that enlightenment, where another group over here might not have received that enlightenment. It doesn't mean that they have to do it, but if it's something that brings harmony and, and peace and they choose to, then fine. It could be something simple as cleanse, cleansiness, right? It should have been a practice already. It should have been better already, right? Um, because it's something that is is uh, scientifically beneficial and will improve your life. Very simple as that, nothing big and fancy. So when you think of this Aquarian age, you're, you're, you're throwing out things that don't work anymore, and you know that, and it's going to be a big number of people. And just because it's in a big number of people doesn't mean it's correct. But it's a natural, what it is, is really a natural evolution process, right? that is bringing about a new change that is needed. Because it's kind of like when something gets so old, you're like, I'm so bored of this, I'm so tired of this, this is ridiculous. And in the, in the nicest way possible, that's the best way of saying it, really. Because you can prepare for something, you can write it down and say, yeah, I get this. But just because I get it, doesn't mean someone else is gonna get it. But in the simplest form, it's not a force. In a sense, it's a waking up. It's an enlightenment moment where you're like, wow, this is old. <laughs> let's not let's not walk. We can invent a wheel. Okay, we have horses. Okay, now we have trains and we have this. And so it's a process of growth that's that says, Hey, this works. This is a better flow. Okay. So I just wanted to, you know tap into that and then see what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what works for you. Another thing to consider that came up when I was forming this meditation is fill yourself with the spirit of you and the creator. Have that, hold that feeling before you start your mudra. So before we start, just let's take a, a pause and feel that. Fill yourself with your own existence. Feel your own existence. Feel your own existence. Take a few breaths with that. Feel your own existence. And now, fill yourself with divine presence, if you will, the creator. Connect yourself to the ethers. See yourself sitting in lotus. The lotus is your lower chakras mundra. And right now you can place your, yourself in the shuni mundra. Thumb, uh, middle finger and thumb connect and the other finger straight up and just rest it at your lap. Spine is straight, shoulders relax, tuck the chin.
you can put your tongue in the fire position. And focus up at the third eye. Your eyes are closed, but you're looking up to the third eye. And just breathe there for a moment. Your fire position, your tongue is straight up, just touching the roof of your mouth. Looking at the third eye, eyes are closed. And breathe. Feel, feel your own presence, feel your own existence. Feel spirit connecting to the ethers. Now fill yourself with courage. Feel what that feels like. Your shoulders should relax. Your chest should rise a little bit. You should become taller, right? Your spine should grow a little bit, lengthen. And tell yourself, be okay with being by yourself. Some of us, that might be hard, but just try. It's okay when you're by yourself, like just sitting in a room, just your own personal alone time for a moment. Be okay with that. And being in your own company. Some of us, it's natural and okay to to do this or to feel this sit with that thought and that feeling for a moment and now Feel that it's okay to let go of fear of the future. It's okay to let go of fear of the future. It's okay to let go of fear for the future. And just know that everything will work out the way that it should, and it will be good. Know that things will work out the way that it should. And you'll be perfectly okay. Already confirm in yourself now that you do have self-discipline to see things through. It will naturally occur for you. And you have the patience to continue even when others may lose their steam, their, their power. Just know that you are patient because things won't happen overnight. Some things will happen overnight for you. But know that it's an ongoing legacy of whatever brings balance. This is a very important moon, full moon in Aquarius. Hold this mundra. 
once again. See yourself going up into the ethers, into space above the earth and higher and just connecting to the ether. The tongue in the fire position, looking at the third eye. And again, see yourself surrounded in either in a blue light, an aquamarine, turquoise blue, and if you feel like you want a dark blue, then that's fine. And reminding yourself, confirming with yourself that I have self-discipline to see this through. That can be your, mon your mantra. I have self-discipline to see this through. I am patient. All is well. I have self-discipline to see this through. I have patience, all is well. You don't have to be perfect and remember the words, but I have self-discipline. I have patience to see this through. I will connect a link to a mantra that you can play for this meditation, mundra meditation. You want to hold this meditation for 15 minutes. You can use your cell phone to um, do a timer and start the music because of copyright, I can't play the music, but that will be your meditation practice for 15 minutes, holding the Shuni Mudra and connecting to that visualization that I gave you. And I hope that you will take the time to pause the video and think about what's my goal? Where do I want this to go? Okay, what's my goal? And, and being committed to it for, for, it could be for a long run and still have other meditations and other goals, but you set that intention and you really get empowered by it and you're protecting your, your own personal energy for no interference, right? Because everyone is doing their own work in, in the high moon. So you're always, every day, having some kind of clearing practice daily, um, for this, okay? But to mention again, your half an hour workout before this, right? Energy workout can be clearing your chakras, can be a kriya for, um, you know, self-discipline or for courage or for patience. You know, you can do a kriya that will, will motivate the, um, the, 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 solar plexus chakra okay so that you you want to balance all of your chakras but you want to um make sure that you're empowering the solar plexus because that's going to give you the energy that you need to accomplish your meditation okay and you also want to tap into the throat chakra okay so you want to connect to the throat chakra and the ear chakra i know they don't teach a lot about the ear chakra 
um, as part of the seventh chakra, but as much as you talk, you should be, be willing to listen. Okay, so that's that's a really um, a really excellent practice. As much as we talk, we want to listen because the throat chakra chakra is the Aquarius chakra, but and the blue, right? But we want that solar plex energy to come up to the throat, but we also have to be willing to hear. So while you're doing your kriya, you can do. Uh, it doesn't take long, one minute on each chakra, just to balance it, visualize the color of that chakra as you're going up, okay? And then bring in the ear, and when you do the ear chakra, you know, say your own words of prayer that I, you know, I hope, not hope, but more like I am willing to listen and hear what others are saying. I'm willing to listen and receive the information I need. We really have to stop in our busy life and consciously tell ourselves, hey, I'm willing to listen. Hey, I'm willing to listen, right? We have to do that. And then going up to the third eye and the crown. So, you know, do a physical workout. It, it could be, you know, it doesn't have to be a yoga kriya. It could be any yoga practice that you want to do, you know, but you want to move the body, but you want to do a kriya that focuses on the core muscle, the solar plexus, and um, you know that really moves move the solar plexus to give you the the physical energy in this physical body to have um, self discipline and the patience you need to see um, your your goal through. Okay, so I'll I'll attach a mantra that's really good that they have um, here, you know, on YouTube that will be helpful. And uh, if you have a, a mantra that you already know, because, you know, we're out in the web here, then one for um, self-discipline and patience and definitely play that. So I want to thank you guys so much for um, watching. Happy full moon in Aquarius. Please click like. It really helps this channel, right? It really helps this channel. And um, <clears throat> yeah, that's that. That will really, really help. And uh, I hope that uh, you guys enjoy. All right. So closing out, okay. When you're ready to, when you finish that and you finish your mantra and you want to close out, okay. We're going to close with Om Shanti Om. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. <laughs> so much. <laughs> Exhale. I have to like try and stop this. Inhale to begin. Shanti Peace to all that exists. Peace.